hearing from and perhaps we'll um, start with a quick round of introductions. My name is Claire Wilson and I am the student recruiter for the Faculty of Science. So I work with students typically while they're at other uh, high schools, colleges, universities, or in other faculties at SFU. Uh, I am going to ask, uh, let's see, Lindsay's unmuted. Lindsay, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Butterworth. I'm the NCA Student Program Coordinator. So I am an academic advisor at SSU for our varsity student athletes. So um, if any of you are varsity student athletes, um, I'm happy to connect and uh, talk about all program options, but um, we can also talk about BPK. Great, Sophie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there, everyone. I'm the um, undergraduate advisor for BPK. So uh, Nicole, who will be, you will get to meet soon, and I are your uh, first contacts. Um, but you do have a great support team that is much bigger than, uh, than Nicole and me. So uh, welcome today. Happy to have you here. And let's have uh, Nicole say hello and then Aiden. Oh, hi, I'm Nicole, BPK Undergraduate Program. I'm Communications Assistant, it's a long word. <laughs> you would have been receiving emails from me regularly, including this email about the info session itself too. So I work closely with Sophie, the advisor, to assist with the BPK Undergraduate Program. So any general program related question can be addressed to me and I'll be able to either help directly or direct you to the right person. So, hello. <laughs> Wonderful, and Eden. And thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the session. So my name is Aiden Wiki. I'm a student uh, success coordinator in the Faculty of Science. So I work closely with students as well as advisors um, and helping students to get connected to resources um, which will help you with um, being successful as a student at SFU. Um, I was uh, the acting academic advisor in BPK last year. Um, filling in for Sophie for a year. So I've got a lot of experience as well in BPK and myself, I'm a kin, uh, kin alumnus. I did the kin degree myself. So I'm not biased at all, but I think it's a great program and I uh, really hope you learned something today. Thank you, Aiden. And just before we dive into the agenda, I wanna take a moment to recognize that all three of SFU's campuses are located on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, uh, and broader Coast Salish communities. And we are very appreciative of that. So to give you an idea of what we're going to do today, we're going to have a bit of an introduction just to the program and what to expect as far as um, formally joining goes, and that'll be mostly Sophie, a little bit of Aiden speaking. Um, we'll also have a few current students who are joining us a bit later, which we're quite excited to hear from them as well. And of course, we're going to have a Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to uh, pop them in the chat. If we're not able to answer it right away, uh, we will definitely make sure that we get back to it by the end. You may also have noticed that this is being recorded. It's so that we can make it available to students later. Uh, it'll be the presentation part that we are most interested in having recorded, not really the Q&A. So if you have uh, more personal questions or more specific questions, uh, those won't be shared later. It'll just be this presentation part that we're saving for future use. And with that, oh, we already did our intro. Sorry, I messed up the order a little bit. With that, I'm gonna turn things over to Sophie. So this uh, photograph you're seeing here is of um, our anatomy lab. It was renovated a few years ago and uh, we're pretty proud of it. Um, so what will you be studying in uh, BPK? What is it that we do? So our mission is to advance the understanding of human anatomy and physiology, movement, neuroscience and health. And we do this through fundamental and applied research, education and service and we provide great opportunities for our undergraduate students um, to get involved in research. And we have a really, really strong um, co-op program. Um, so uh, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, and this is our um, anatomage table, which is also in the anatomy lab. You couldn't see it because it was in the foreground. This is a really um, cutting edge tool that we, we got recently as well. It's basically a virtual um, dissection table. It's a 3D anatomy platform. So um, as one of our majors, it doesn't matter which 
of our three majors you do, you will get to uh, be in the anatomy lab and get to use this, this really cool table. So again, three majors. We have um, kinesiology, and that is our oldest major. We have biomedical physiology, and we have behavioral neuroscience. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of them. Um, as I've mentioned, our um, kinesiology degree is our oldest degree. And you study human structure and function and its relation to health and movement. Um, I know that this is an oversimplification, but normally what I say to students is you're going to be studying the whole body. So you're gonna be studying exercise, nutrition, rehabilitation, occupational ergonomics, health behavior and uh, promotion. So um, you can complete a kin major with or without a concentration. Now the active health and rehab concentration is our most popular degree. That is the degree that most of our students are in. Um, it is very applied and it's amazing preparation for students who are interested in becoming physical therapists or occupational therapists. The active health and rehab concentration is also recognized by the BCAK, that's the British Columbia Association of Kinesiologists. So if you want to go out and work as a registered kinesiologist, the active health and rehab concentration is also a great degree to be doing. Um, I've jumped ahead on my slides. Um, so biomedical physiology and kinesiology, again, you're gonna be studying um, human structure and function. Um, and regulation of the human body. So, but it is a little bit, it's more cellular, it's more molecular. So the students who do this degree will do a little bit of extra chemistry, a little bit of extra MBB. They, they'll do more of those courses than our um, kin majors or uh, BNU majors would do. Um, and this degree is really good preparation for students who are interested in becoming a, a doctor or a dentist um, a pharmacist, an optometrist. You can do that too with a kin degree and you can do that too with behavioral neuroscience. But this one, so someone who says, I really wanna become a cardiologist, this would be um, a great degree for them. Somebody who says, I want to become an orthopedic surgeon would probably do kinesiology. And then if somebody says, I'm really interested in working with, with uh, patients with um, neurological disorders like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, they would probably do behavioral neuroscience. So just because it's confusing because there is a common core across all three of our majors. And it's important when you're filling out your program approval form or doing the internal transfer, you wanna make sure you're um, filling out the correct form. Now, don't worry if you end up in the wrong major, you can switch out of one and, and into the other as well. So it's not, um, if you've made the wrong decision, it can be easily corrected. So behavioral neuroscience, um, this is, um, a, a, it's our newest degree. Um, it was pretty cutting edge. When we first started this degree, we were the first undergraduate program in behavioral neuroscience. My understanding is that UBC has, has such a, um, an equivalent program now. So we were ahead of UBC. Um, and this is a combination of psychology and also BPK. So you're gonna be studying systems and sensory um, neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, including things like attention and learning and memory, neurological disorders, I've, I've mentioned a few like uh, Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, neuroanatomy, biological rhythms, general physiology and, and psychology. Uh, and, and of course, behavioral, it's, it's brain and behavior. It's the body and brain and behavior. Um, and again, what kind, of uh, what kind of things can you do as careers? Again, you can do medicine, you can do PT or OT, especially if you wanna work with special populations. You could do advanced degrees in neuroscience or clinical psychology. So lots of different things you can do um, with this major as well. So a little bit about the uh, program overview. As I've said, uh, all of our majors have a common core. Um, the lower division consists of 14 to 19 core courses. So BPK courses, biology, chemistry, math, molecular biology, biochemistry, physics, and stats. So you might say, well, why, what's the difference between the 14 and 19 core courses? So remember I said biomedical physiology has to do a little bit of extra chemistry, a little bit of extra MBB. That's where those extra courses come in there. It doesn't mean that your degree is longer. It just means that you're doing a, a, a few more of the general sciences. The upper division for all of our majors is um, 45 units. 
Uh, you do have the option if you want to, by the time you, you're getting close to completing your third year, 90 units, if you've decided you'd like to do um, a research project, a thesis, you can do honors. That's an additional 15 units on, on top of that. Um, so all degrees at SFU have to complete WQB requirements. So that means that you have to do six units of writing. Uh, oh, we've got a guest. We've got a furry guest. Um, we have, you have to do six units of writing. So three units usually of lower division and then three units of upper division writing. The upper division writing is, is automatically included in your degree because some of the core courses you, you do will be a W. Your quantitative requirements are automatically included as part of your required courses. You do have to do six, in, um, six independent BSOs, six independent BHUM. I say six independent because some courses can satisfy both requirements, but you will have to choose whether you want it to satisfy BHUM or BSOs. I'm going through this pretty fast. I really do want to leave some time for, for you to ask questions. We will make all these slides available to you as well. So, um, and do tell me if I am going too fast, let me know when, and I can um, slow down a little bit as well. And of course you have to do breast sci, but those are met automatically with this degree as well. We do have some minors as well, and I'm gonna actually um, let Aiden talk about um, the minors and uh, the other options available. Sure, thanks Sophie. So, uh... Most of our students are doing a major in one of the three programs. Uh, there is an option to do a minor. A minor uh, requires less courses. There are less uh, course requirements to get into a minor um, as well as to complete the minor. Um, so there's actually two uh, separate options that we can talk about here. Um, one is to, um, and most, most students will typically have a major in some field of study and then minor in uh, kinesiology or biomedical physiology. So those are the two minors that are offered in BPK. Um, there is another option which is lesser known, but also a really great option, uh, which is called the general science double minor program. And it allows students uh, the flexibility to focus on um, two areas uh, in which they minor, while at the same time getting a bachelor's of science degree at the end. Um, so you do get that solid foundation in science. Uh, only one of the minors is required to be within science, okay? Um, so uh, an example of this, um, I have had students in the past um, who were doing um, uh, a minor in an arts-related uh, topic um, or even uh, business. Um, so a, a business minor and a kinesiology minor um, and it was an interesting combination, but um, it was someone who is very interested in um, rehab and exercise science, but also wanted to perhaps um, get into business in the future. Um, so they, they, in that case, were using the, the general science double minor uh, to kind of get a grounding in both of those areas. Um, if you uh, want to explore the general science double minor, uh, you will contact the faculty of science, um, science advisor. Her name is Melissa Tamer. Um, and we'll share this information at the end um, on how to get in touch with, with them. And they have a separate um, uh, approval process to get approved into that program. Um, and again, I think an uh, important point I want to stress here is you do at the end still get a, a bachelor of science degree. So for those who are interested in um, you know, grad school or professional school in the future, um, often that is one of the main requirements is to have a bachelor's degree and you would still have um, that bachelor's degree with this program. So um, I'm assuming that a lot of you are here today because you are at SFU, but you could be in the faculty of science. Um, either you're in the faculty of science and you haven't declared a major yet or you're in the faculty of science in a different major and you're thinking of transferring, or you could be in one of the other faculties. So to get approved into one of our majors, you will have to do the internal transfer process. The deadlines for that are February 1st, June 1st and October 1st. And um, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the process. So there is a separate approval form for each of our majors and our minors. Approval is competitive. 
and it's based on grades in a subset of courses taken at SFU. So on the approval form, you will see set one and set two. Um, that approval form is on our BPK website. And um, when we go through the resources at the end of the presentation, the link will be provided there for you. Um, so when I say courses that you've taken at SFU, what that means is that for some of you, you may have received transfer credits from advanced placement or IB or from another post-secondary institution. Let's say you went to Douglas and then you transferred in. So those courses will count towards your degree, but they will not count towards the approval GPA. Okay, so um, it's really, really important. The approval form is two pages long. Um, it's really important to read that, page, that, that approval form carefully, even though it's a bit text dense. I think we could probably um, improve that form a little bit, but um, it's really important that you do that. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an, of an example about um, you know, set one and set two. So here's, um, so I've got a fictitious student, student Kira. So she comes in, um, this is one of our scholarship students. She came in with um, a 95% average out of high school. She's won one of our big scholarships. She's a go-getter, she's really disciplined. And she says, I can complete all of set one courses in my first term. So that means that she's going to do biology 101, BPK 142, Chem 121, Math 154, and Physics 101. Now, this is a total of 17 units. I do not recommend this, okay? But I'm using this just as an example for you. So, so Kira came in, she had huge grades, but it's a big transition from high school to university. So in her first term on those 17 units, Kira ends up getting all Bs in all of her courses. That means that she's, she meets the minimum approval GPA of three. And so she took, took these courses in the fall. At, once her grades are out by the approval deadline of Feb 1st, she's gonna, she will submit her approval form and she will be approved in time for summer enrollment. Again, I don't recommend this. It's just an example for you. This is a little bit more of a typical example. So Josh, our, we need to move to the next slide, please. So Josh, in his first term at SFU, does BPK 142, he does Chem 121, he does Math 154, and he does Physics 100. Josh is doing Physics 100 because he wasn't able to do, he wasn't able to, or he chose not to do Physics 12 in high school. So that's why he needs to do Physics 100 in preparation to do Physics 101. So this is only, this is 13, I shouldn't say only because it's a heavy course load, but this is 13 units. This is more in line with what our students would be doing. And, and he achieves B grades across the board as well. So he meets the minimum GPA of three, but he hasn't completed all of set one. So he can't apply for approval yet. So Josh will complete all of set one in his second term. He'll do biology 101, physics 101, and maybe an English course and a psychology course. So in other words, he's doing some of those, um, he's doing the electives, an English course would be a breath humanities, a psych psychology course would, would be a breath social studies. And then at the end of that, he can apply if he meets the minimum GPA of three. So he will be applying, if he finishes those courses in the spring term, he will be applying for the June 1st deadline in time for fall registration. So we can move to the next slide. So, all courses that have been completed at SFU that are listed in set one and two will be used in the approval GPA. So a student cannot complete all of set one and some set two courses and ignore those set two courses in their application. I'm sure there'll be questions about this later and we, and we can go into more detail. So a student who has completed set one and a minimum of four set two courses can apply with a lower approval GPA of 2.7. We don't keep track of how many times students apply. Now I'm assuming that if you've, if you've done, you've read the approval form, you've done the GPA calculator and you don't meet the approval GPA, you probably wouldn't submit an approval form. But if you weren't sure and you did submit an approval form and you were below the approval GPA and we turned you down, we're not keeping track of that. So don't worry about it. We don't keep track of how many times you apply, but 
We do reserve seats in um, our BBK courses for approved majors and minors. If you haven't been approved by the time you're, you're ready to register for upper division BBK courses, you will not be able to continue because they're 100% reserved for approved students. Move on to the next slide. So, so be prepared. I guess what we're trying to say here is don't underestimate the courses. Um, it is a big transition from high school. It's a transition even from college to SFU. And you, you have lots of time within your degree. If you start off and you're taking nine or 12 units, it doesn't always add up. Sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 13 or 11, because um, typically we say a full-time term is nine units is full-time for student loans. 12 is, is full-time for um, a lot of international students, for varsity athletes, for certain scholarships, you need to be in 12. 15 is considered full-time. Um, especially for a lot of the medical schools want to see that some students have that students have done at least four full time terms and they want to see 15. You have time later on in your degree to do more credit hours in a term. So don't start off. Um, it can be really, really hard for students if you're used to getting those those grades right the A's and if, if the lowest grade you've ever received is a B and then you overload yourself in your first term. Um, it can be really demoralizing, right? It can be sort of um, hard if all of a sudden, so, you know, um, to, uh, figure out what you're capable of, talk to your advisors, and also know what the deadlines are to drop a course. If, you, um, if you've taken on too many courses and, and um, early on in the term you realize, I think I'm in too many courses, make sure you know what the drop deadline is. So the tri-semester system. If you have only, if you've taken nine or 12 units in a particular term, so most students, typical universities, it's fall and spring. Fall is September to December, January to, to April is the spring term. If you've taken less courses in the fall and spring, you can make it up um, by taking a couple of courses in the summer term. Just be aware that there are less courses offered in the summer. Not all courses run all year round. Continuance GPA, we are a competitive entry program. And it also means that once you get into our program, you do have to maintain a science GPA, a minimum science GPA of 2.5. And you won't be, um, we don't run the GPA report until students have completed at least 24 units. So that gives students a bit of an adjustment period when you first come in. And so that um, continuance GPA is in effect between 24 units and 90 units. And the reason why we don't um, have that beyond 90 units is it's, it, if a person is really close to graduating with their degree, we're not go going to withdraw them from the major and ask them to find a different program to do. So um, there is a limit. So um, sometimes students are concerned about their GPAs they will repeat courses to try and improve their GPA. So there is a limit. Typically, the university allows students to do a total of five repeats per degree. Um, you can only repeat a particular course once. Now, they've um, made some changes to that right now because of COVID. And so there is a, a time period where they're going to allow more repeats. I think it's a max of eight. But I hope that none of you will need to actually use the max allowed. Um, but it, so do, do chat with an advisor before you repeat courses um, to, to really think about, is this, a, is this a good use of a repeat? Should I do this? And, and um, especially um, if you're a varsity athlete, and I don't know if we have any today, but do make sure you, you speak with your um, varsity advisor as well, um, you know, if you, if you need to repeat courses. I'm going to um, pass it over to Aiden to talk a little bit about co-op and careers. And um, Aiden, as I think he led on, did complete um, our, a kin degree and he also did co-op. So he can speak to you from personal experience. Thanks, Sophie. So uh, I'm gonna share a little bit about co-op. Um, as Sophie mentioned, BPK has a very strong co-op program. Um, it is open to, to all BPK students, but as well, it's open to intended BPK students. 
Um, so co-op offers, and thanks Nicole for putting the link in the chat. Um, it offers uh, you the opportunity to take uh, a term off of studies and to engage in paid work experience. Um, co-op jobs are related to the field that you're studying in. Um, so it's a really, really wonderful way, um, especially for the BPK programs, which are um, quite broad. There's a lot of different things you can study within BPK and even within a, a kinesiology major. Um, there's um, various different fields that you can get into. Uh, Co-op's a great way to experience that firsthand, um, learn through working uh, in the field with uh, working professionals. Um, really wonderful way to uh, learn what you like, but also what you don't like, which is just as valuable information. Um, so just a story about myself, I, I transferred to SFU um, and um, internally transferred into kinesiology um, and then got involved with the co-op program. And um, my first co-op was actually working in a health and fitness um, uh, gym. And, um, you know, that was a great experience, but um, wasn't something I intended to keep doing. So my second co-op, I actually um, worked in an ergonomics um, job. So I worked at a uh, beef plant in Alberta, actually. And um, so this was a really interesting experience. I got to you know, experience um, moving to another province and working, um, but also um, learning from you know, a, an ergonomics professional who was my boss and really doing a lot of hands-on work experience. Um, and I actually did five co-op terms in my whole, throughout my whole degree. And my last co-op term, term actually turned into my first job um, after university because I kept in touch with the employers um, and um, you always have that opportunity to develop uh, networking relationships through co-op. Um, and another really valuable um, part about it is that you know, if you need references, some of you might apply to grad school in the future. Um, co-op will be a great way to get uh, work-related references. Um, so co-op, um, they offer four, eight, or 12-month work terms. Um, if you do a minimum of three work terms, um, you do, do get that co-op um, uh, degree designation on your, on your um, certificate, on your degree. And they actually run co-op um, info sessions every term. And I have information for you on this terms. Um, the the co-op information session is next week. So Wednesday, May 19th at 1130. And I'm going to uh, put into the chat a link um, if you are interested um, in attending that session. Um, you would just need to um, submit your, uh, your uh, probably your name, email, and student number to this link. I'm just going to put it in right now. So there, hopefully everyone can see that link. And again, of course, reach out to co-op or you can um, find their contact information on the BPK co-op homepage, which I believe Nicole put a link as well. So. I'll pass it back to Sophie. Well, it looks like Olivia, one of our students, um, is waiting for me now. So um, a lot of you are interested in these particular degrees because every, as we've said um, earlier, they're really, really great preparation for um, medical school and physio and OT and, and even going on and doing a research master's. Um, we hear over and over again from our students who've graduated with one of our majors and who are in professional schools. Other students will often say to them, what did you study? Where did you go? Because they've done so much anatomy and physiology that when they're in med school, when they're in physical therapy school, occupational optometry, whatever they're in, a lot of what they're, they're studying is review for them. Um, they've already seen the anatomy, the physiology, and, and so it, they're just great preparation. But so the question is, well, um, you know, how do I get into med school? How do I get into physio? We do ask that you do a certain amount of research, a certain amount of prep yourself. So you, you say, okay, well, um, I'd like to stay in BC. I want to stay close to my friends and family. I'd like to get into uh, UBC med school. 
we ask you to go and have a look at the UBC um, med school website and to look at it really, really carefully. But you should also prepare and go, I may not be able to get into um, UBC med school. So you should look and see what other med schools are um, available across the country and go and have a look at their website. Same thing if you're interested in, in physical therapy or optometry, but we are here to help you as well. And one of the reasons why I say um, do go and do your own research is those other institutions can change their requirements and they're not going to inform me as the advisor that they've changed their requirements. So I can't, I, I can't always go in and make sure that I'm aware of all of the changes, all of the small print. So do your own research, but if you've gone and had a look at the website and you're going, I'm not sure I understand what they're asking, then come back, come back to me, book an appointment and um, we'll go through it together. Um, so you should be doing that prep. Certainly start thinking about that prep at the end of your second year, around your third year. Um, there's a lot of additional things for medical school. You're going to have to do the um, MCAT for dentistry. There's the DAT. A lot of places now require the CASPAR test. I think it's um, C-A-S-P-A-R or is it P-E-R? Um, but, uh, and, and again, you may say, I've, I've fallen in love with research. Um, so I, I may still wanna do medical school someday, but I think I wanna go and do um, a research master's. Um, so do your, do your research, uh, but we're here to help as well. And actually maybe in the future, we'll have another one of these info, info sessions where we will focus you know, exactly on um, preparing for um, these professional schools. But you know, a lot of students will do one of our majors and they go on, it's a terminal degree for them. They go on and, and go out into the workforce and they end up in biotech or they become a registered kinesiologist. Um, so this is not the, not everyone ends up in a, in a professional program and that's just, that's fine as well. Um, I don't know if I need to say much more about, about that slide, I think. Um, and so I, we really want you to spend some time hearing from um, our students. Um, Nicole will introduce herself. She's one of our senior students. She's amazing. She sits on our undergraduate program committee and she can tell you more about her journey. Um, you know, when she first came into, came to SFU and what, what she's learned, what she likes. So I'm going to pass it over to Nicole. Nicole, we do have also a section on peer mentoring. It's going to come up in a couple of slides. If you feel comfortable chatting about peer mentoring, please do so. And, and if Aidan has anything to add, he will do that as well. And thanks for being here, Nicole. Oh, thanks for having me. It's good to see you, Sophie, um, and you too, Aiden and Nicole. Um, hope you're well. Um, yeah, so as Sophie introduced me, my name's Nicole. I'm a fourth year undergraduate student. Um, I am a kinesiology major, um, and I'm also in the active health and rehabilitation concentration. Um, yeah, so I hold an elected position on our student association. Um, I'm the department rep, so I advocate for um, the undergrads to have the best learning experience possible. Um, and the professors have always been really receptive. So if there's one thing I can tell you, um, it's that the department really, really cares about the undergraduate learning experience. They care what you have to say, and um, they really work hard to make the program um, and to be the best it really can be. If I were to give a few words of advice, it would be if you're coming into BPK and this goes for any major that, that you choose, whether it's in BPK or not, you do have to fully commit to really get the best experience. So keep your eye out for any kind of volunteer opportunities and especially research opportunities um, that you possibly can. Um, and in BPK, I would say, the research opportunity, opportunities are really what tends to round out the degree for a lot of people because you can focus on one specific area of an interest of your choice, which is really cool. Yeah, anything else, Sophie, that I should include? No, that's great. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, and so our next, um, our next student is Olivia, and um, I don't want to say too much because I want to, Olivia to, to introduce herself, but Olivia's um, a varsity athlete. Um, she did her undergraduate program with us. She's now working on, on graduate studies. So she, she just has a wealth of experience. And um, so I'm going to let her 
tell you more about it herself. Hi, Sophie. Can you guys hear me okay? Good. Awesome. It's nice to see everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm like looking around. I'm like so many friendly faces. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Uh, it's kind of hard following Nicole because she, I feel like, painted a really good picture of the undergrad experience in BPK. Um, I guess maybe I'll talk a little bit about me and my experience. And then if people have questions, feel free to engage. Um, yeah, I, I'm old. <laughs> I've been around for a while. I did my undergrad starting here in 2012. And then I finished up in 2018 in kinesiology. So you're probably wondering, why did it take you so long? As Sophie mentioned, I was a varsity student athlete at SFU. I played soccer, um, but the that kind of drawed it out a bit. Um, but also just being involved with like co-ops and directed studies and all that experience made the degree a bit longer, but were probably honestly the like most important part of what I took away and what I learned during that time at SFU. Um, so kind of re reiterating what Nicole said, like, I think, yeah, definitely the minute you step, <laughs> step foot in the department, try to get involved in as many ways as possible. Um, things that are more practical, like co-op and directed studies are really good for like honing in on your soft and hard skills. You learn a lot more there than you will in a classroom. Um, but even just volunteering, getting on committees, um, coming to like little social events, tea at 10s, like it's all good ways of like just increasing your exposure, getting to meet people, building connections and network and all that stuff and just building on your experience um, in the department. And then once um, I concluded my undergrad, then I personally continued on with grad school. So I started off in the master's program in 2018 and then I fast tracked to the PhD. So now I'm doing my PhD. So I have a bit of a, I guess, different trajectory than some because I think a lot of people come into BBK wanting to do med or physio, et cetera, um, I ended up going into research, which is somewhere I never thought I would be. Um, but now that I'm here, I'm loving it. And so if you have any questions with respect to what's it like to be a grad student, um, what's it like to do research, feel free to contact me. I can put even my email um, in the chat if you'd like. Uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Olivia. And I guess I can share a little bit here about uh, the BPK Peer Mentorship Program. Um, so Olivia gave us a great reminder about the importance of connecting. Um, there's numerous, um, you know, really great opportunities within the department to connect with uh, other students, with, um, with profs as well as, or, or even labs. Um, you may feel a little bit like, I don't know where to start, or especially right now where we're all remote and it's, uh, it may feel, very different, right? And, and um, we no, don't necessarily get to see each other in person yet. Um, but the peer mentorship um, can be a really great way to get connected um, to a mentor. Uh, so it'd be a senior BPK student um, who you can be matched up with. Um, so I know this is a very active program. Um, they always have a really great group of uh, peer mentors. Um, this is typically meant for uh, first year students who are starting to get connected with with a senior student, um, but it is also available for um, a new BPK student who has internally transferred in. Um, so I'm going to put, well, thanks, Nicole put a, a link in the chat um, to their website. Um, so I'd strongly encourage you to reach out to them. Um, and it's a great opportunity to meet um, another BPK student. And if you get into the program and in the future want to give back, I encourage you to be a peer mentor in the future. Um, and help out new students to the department because um, it's it's really one of the um, really strong programs that BPK has. So Aiden, were you going to um, cover this slide as well? I mean, I, it's it's really more just to show students who, who to contact, but uh, if you have anything else you'd want yeah. to add, it would be great. Yeah, essentially this is really just um, how to get in touch with us. And of course, uh, we are going to share these slides. Nicole will be sending out the slides um, afterwards so that you have this information. But essentially there, as Sophie said before, we are a team and we all wanna to work together to support you. 
um, from the time that you come to SFU, from the time that you're applying into the program, um, to the time that you're a student um, within the program, and even thinking about your next steps after graduation. Um, so as such, um, there are different ways to reach us and different people, but um, this is all listed on this, this um, slide and hopefully it's um, self-explanatory, but um, essentially uh, BPK advisor is Sophie. So that's all your um, course and degree planning needs, um, as well as when you're applying for internal transfer, those applications will go to Sophie. Um, Claire is the, the recruiter, science recruiter. So if you're um, not yet in science, uh, Claire is definitely the person to talk to. Um, we have their science advisor. So that person is Melissa Tamer um, currently. And if you are interested in the general science double minor program, um, she's definitely the one to talk to. If you are currently um, uh, under 60 units and not declared, um, if you don't have a major, don't have a program yet, um, and I believe most people here are intended, um, and you can't, you may not feel like, um, you know, you have a departmental advisor yet, you do still have access to advising. Um, and student services advisors are great. They understand um, many of the different options throughout the whole university, not just EPK, not just science, but um, everything that um, is available to you as an SFU student. Um, so the link to the student services advisors is there. Um, and Lindsay is actually a part of that team as well. Um, and then myself, I'm the last email address here. Um, as I said before, I'm very happy to work closely with students to connect you with um, resources, especially academic resources to really support your success um, in your courses. Um, as well as, I, you know, I've got a soft spot for BPK students because I was one and I'm happy to have those discussions about, you know, what you want to do in BPK or talk to you about uh, co-op experiences um, or even what you want to do after your degree. So I think that covers those contacts. Uh, and then we have our resource list here. Uh, these are just a few of the resources, by the way, there's, there's plenty of resources out there. Um, and if you want to talk out the resources, please feel free to email myself or one of the others here um, just to figure out which one's the most applicable. But we listed some of the main ones. Uh, we mentioned peer mentorship already. Um, the GPA calculator, that's actually a, a pretty handy little tool for um, all of you when you're um, submitting your internal transfer um, forms, you, you will want to calculate your GPA to, to make sure that you've got the, um, the minimum um, GPA requirement. Uh, the BPK forms um, page is where you will actually find the approval forms. So that's the form that Sophie was referring to. Um, there's some information about continuance GPA, which Sophie mentioned. And this last link is uh, actually a really useful resource for having some of those discussions about what you'd like to do with your degree. Um, so we actually have a career advisor named Brenda Bajero, who is responsible, responsible for science students. Um, so she works as well with BPK students. And she's really great to have for having some of those exploratory conversations about you know, what your skills, interests, passions are. Um, she's not necessarily a job placement coordinator, like she's not gonna hook you up with a specific job, but she can have a, a broader conversation about um, what are some paths and what are some different options and what are ways to set yourself up um, to best be you know, suited for those paths. I just wanted to add one last thing about resources especially right now that we're all um, working remotely and, and taking classes remotely. We actually didn't provide um, any of the links, but there is a really, really, really important is health and counseling. Um, it's, it can be a really stressful time right now. And I don't know if all students are aware that um, health and counseling provides a whole bunch of services. It's free for students, it's confidential. Um, there's virtual resources, um, there is an app that you can download, um, there's a number that you can contact 24-7, um, there's the student learning commons where there's all kinds of things like university writing help, um, time management, um, 
exam anxiety. They even put on a new workshop recently about how to succeed in online exams. So um, do make sure that you're aware of these resources um, and that you use them. Don't be, um, I, I, don't be ashamed of, of using um, all of these resources. Uh, as I said, they're free, they're confidential. And um, if, you, if you're not aware of the resources, then reach out to us, reach out to Aidan, reach out to me, reach out to Nicole, um, and just let, a know, let us know if you're struggling and uh, we will connect you with resources. We want you to succeed. Um, you're, all, you're all really smart students and you're very capable. You have what, what it takes to succeed, but things happen. Things happen in life and if you're, you know, I, anyway, I'm not going to say much more. I just want to make sure that um, we didn't touch on those resources. There's a lot of them, and um, do find them or 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 ask us if if we can provide that information for you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, so this is the end of the presentation part of um, today, but we would love to open the floor up for questions. Um, Sophie, I'm not sure if you want to stop recording at this point in case you're going to post this online. That way, if any more um, 